Um, I will start. Hey, Chick, it is great to see you. Um, I, I first just was curious if you could walk us through this last year and what it's been like for you and, and how great it is to be back um, this spring. Yeah, so I'll say around, uh, what time was it? Around like March is when I first had like my situation going on. And then around the next time I got a checkup was right before summertime. And that's when they uh, told me I wasn't gonna be able to play this season. And then for the longest, so it was like an injury. So I had uh, myocarditis and that's, um, they think it was from a COVID complication, but they don't know for sure if it was from COVID because at the time with the testing back then, it was like the early testing. So we didn't know if it was a, a false negative or not because I tested negative for COVID, but they believe that it was from COVID. I got myocarditis, so with my heart. And it was like <clears throat> from, it was like back in March, uh, I was, it was just like a couple of days I was feeling like chest pain. And then I was like, dang, I was getting pretty bad. So then like, I was actually at my girlfriend's house and they took me to the hospital. And that's when um, they, they said there's something, like my EKG was really weird. And then um, I had to stay overnight in the hospital that day. They just wanted to monitor, monitor me and stuff. And then I got out and then I came back and I had my next checkup in uh, Baltimore, Maryland, the hospital up there. And then that's when they told me I was gonna be able to play this season because there was uh, some little scar tissue on my heart from the myocarditis. And they said the only way that I could heal from that, I can't do any, I couldn't do any exercise for six months. So that six months went into the season. So for six months, I was literally just at home, just doing school, schoolwork. And I mean, it was great because I had a lot of time. That's that's probably my best semester I've ever had here in terms of like grades, but I had a lot of time to do that. So I was just home, just chilling, just watching the games. Like going to, I went to a couple of the games, I was trying to stay away from COVID as much as I could. And then, um, uh, then I got, then I had my, so after my six months was up, I think that was around late October. And that's when I was feeling, I started to feel good again. Cause like, I, like before they even told me I wasn't gonna be able to play this season, I could kind of tell that I wasn't gonna be able to play. Cause I could tell from like my body, like, like sometimes I'd feel stuff and I'd be like, dang, I don't think I'm ready to go back. But then like by October, I started feeling back to normal. And that's when I did my, uh, stress test at the hospital and then everything was fine. My heart was like back to normal, then had my MRIs all that good stuff and everything was back to the normal. And then now, as you know, I'm back completely doing stuff again. And it feels really good to be back with the team. So, so during that six months, could you do anything physical or were you like totally unable to do anything related to sports? They told me I, I could not do anything. Like I literally could not do anything that was that would make my um, heart rate increase. I remember when I first got to the hospital the first time, and I was feeling better. I was doing, I was like, I was still working out and stuff. Cause I didn't, I didn't realize like the severity of the, of the problem. Then I started feeling the pains again. And then that's when they told me like, no, no physical activity at all for uh, six months. And then that's when I really just sat down and just was just doing school work on zoom all day, playing games. <laughs> did, did you ever wonder um, if you would play again? Like when you have something that serious, like did you always know you would be able to be back this season or at some point did you ever think, oh my gosh, this could all be over? Yeah, I mean, that, that thought definitely came to my mind, but I also know that I'm blessed, so I'm covered by the Lord. So I knew that I was going to eventually come back and be able to play again. But also, yeah, I had those thoughts. I was like, dang, what if I, what if the last time I played football was the last time I could play football? And those are kind of scary, but I knew I was always going to come back though, but I did have those thoughts. Hey, Jake, thanks for giving us a couple of minutes. I appreciate it. Glad to hear that you're doing well. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what it's like coming back into this tight ends room and, and being a leader on this team? Oh, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's really fun because, you know, my first couple of years playing, I wasn't the oldest guy in the room, but like now I am. So it's like, it's really fun being able to like lead the young guys and just drop my knowledge on them of everything I've learned over the past few years. And then just having like a bigger room now, because like usually our tight end room is like, three to four guys and now it's like eight, eight of us. So it's a really fun in there. We're able to go, we don't have to do, I don't have to go ones and twos every practice and get super tired. I actually have time to rest now with uh, all the young guys there and, and all the guys who've been there. And, you know, we got some guys moved to tight end. So it's been, it's been really a nice experience being able to be that guy who's been 
playing and drop my knowledge on them all the time and just give them tips and stuff like that. What, what should we know about the, the, the freshmen, Wes and CJ? Uh, I, I don't know a ton about them. What, what are they like as players and people? Oh, yeah, man. That man, CJ, that man is, I swear, like, he, he looks like he's 26. <laughs> like, he's literally 18. And then Wes is literally 17. It's like, it's like, dude, these guys are, are huge. Like, they have such a high ceiling. I, I can't wait to see how, like, their careers play out. And, and they're very, like, they're very hard workers, too. And like they listen, and like they're very coachable kids. So like they're going to be really good. Are you excited to get back to where, um, you know, like Loxley's system really likes using tight ends? It seems like, um, and last yeah. year didn't really have that chance as much. Um, as a tight ends group, have, are are you guys excited about hopefully being able to add that element back into the offense? Oh yeah, for sure. We're definitely adding that back. Now that I'm back, we're definitely adding that that element back in the offense. If you guys can see practices, then you'll see, like, yeah, we definitely, tight ends are definitely back. Hi, I have a quick question. Just kind of more on, like, a personal side of you. I know you've kind of coined this term that you use a lot on social media, like, ridiculous that you like to use. <laughs> I kind of want to hear a little bit about that from you. So, like, maybe a little bit about how you came up with that, what that means, where it's going for you. What are you thinking there? Dang, where did I come up with that? I swear it was somewhere like it was somewhere in high school where I just came up with it and I was like, ridiculous. That, that just sounds that just sounds great. I was like, that can be like my brand. I was like, and then from then on, I swear, like every single picture I always post, I always tag that because like I want that to be like my thing. So it started in high school and I've just ran with it since. I thought it was something cool. What's it mean exactly to you? It's just like I, I assume play on words with like ridiculous kind ridiculous, of like, something like that. Like okay. some words, ridiculous, ridiculous. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Thank you. And then just kind of follow up on a different note, but um, coach Loxley was talking the other day a little bit about how this team's a lot about building, building towards like uh, continuing to build the program and how this team mm -hmm. is filled with guys who really are willing to just like work with their hands and kind of do that for you. What does that mean? What's it like being a part of this program and kind of helping continue to establish it more and more each year? Yeah, for me, that's really huge. Cause like, as you just know, like I've been here pretty much through everything. So I've been here from when everything was torn down and we've been building the past couple of years and just seeing like the success we've had last year. Um, that means a lot to me because it's like, I feel like our class was the foundation that really set that. And the people who were able to stay and stick through it and didn't transfer, like we were the ones who really like built it from the ground up. And I can't really, I like, I see, as we all see, like it's trending towards like a really good direction. And um, even though it won't be able to be a part of it for so long, but it's really cool that we were able to like build that and that you can see like the program, like getting to where it, sh it should be. Thank you. Anything else guys? I'll ask one quick one, just in general, um, what, what is different about the offense with Goginos? Uh, I'll say, we just, uh, it's, it's a lot faster. We've take we took it, we've taken out a lot of like the things that would slow us down, just like change certain plays to just one word. And we would just know like the entire play instead of like having to signal every single thing about the play. We just change it to just one word. We all know what to do. So we can just all be able to just get in our mind and just play faster. And, and I have one quick follow up just about everything we talked about at the beginning. Were you coming to the facility at all or were you totally separated from the team? Uh, I was totally separated for the team until, until like the season started. That's when I uh, came to a couple games, but I wasn't I wasn't in the facility because I really wanted to try to stay away from COVID. I didn't want to be around people, okay. and as you see, like there's a lot of COVID outbreaks in the team too. But when we started, um, when I got cleared in October, that's when I was doing like, like special lifts with like my coaches and stuff, just like body weight stuff and band stuff, and that's when I started coming back and testing every day and being in the facility. And I imagine the reason to stay away from COVID, I'm, I'm not a doctor, but it's like I'd imagine if you were to catch it, it would be, it could be a lot worse because you're already dealing with an issue. Yeah, yeah. that's what, that's the thing that we were scared about. We don't want to, I don't want to catch it again, like while I was trying to heal and then like go back to square one. Thanks, Jake. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Jake. No problem. Thank you.